Hello and welcome to this Warcraft replay. This is gonna be It's just gonna be a replay. I'm not I'm actually choosing I guess uh specific games instead of series, so uh I might be picking, you know, particular games here and there from series that I probably have not casted, and this is one of them. Uh this is gonna be an undead mirror once again, uh, I believe I should get, you know, another Undead Mirror down and then go back to some other sort of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, this is going to be from Game 3 of the WEL that took place this year. Um, WEL stands for World Esports League, uh, and of course it does have a Warcraft uh, branch, I guess I would say. Um, WFZ is going to be spawning in as one of the undead players on the top left, and he will be facing off against uh, Seshi. And Seshi hasn't been hasn't been seen all that often. Uh, I actually have no idea what happened to our European friend, but uh, he. I actually don't have any information about where what Seshi is doing nowadays, or at least he's probably very down my radar because I have not seen any of his games being put up recently so there's that I mean Seshi used to be one of uh, the most dominant Warcraft players in the non-Asian scene um, specifically European uh, but I guess you could say that that title is now claimed uh, by Inquisitive Hawk or some may argue it might be someone else. Uh, they're not sure who. Maybe Sonic. Maybe uh, let's just stop here. Okay. Uh, the map is going to be on Crystal Kingdom. So yeah, game three. This is going to be a rather lengthy video, but uh, might as well cast one long video than I guess a couple of short ones. I did notice that it's been a very long time since my last cast. I might even I might even uh, upload another video, like a singular game from somewhere else as well. Uh, it might actually be what is it? A a Night Elf vs Orc matchup. I might be casting that one and something like that. But either way, let's focus on this one. Uh, it looks like standard. Standard opening for both players. I think WFC might be going for something different. Uh, doesn't look like it, actually. But both players did go rather interesting orders. Um, she says she is delaying his Halls of the Dead. In the meantime, he is actually training up a couple more Crypt Fiends. Meanwhile, WFC has gone for the Halls of the Dead first and then starts his Crypt Fiend production. Um, it doesn't really matter too much, it just maybe indicates which player is going to be going on the offensive first. I honestly think, well based on this, that Seishi might, might benefit more from attacking first than WFZ, but it does look like WFZ is going to go in for some harassment. He did pick up one of those Huskars with the Death Coil. Of course, I mean, Sishi had the same ability to do so himself since he already has Death Coil, but don't know why he didn't do that. Uh, nevertheless, level 2 has been gained for both of the Death Knights. Horses of the Dead uh, is underway for for Sishi. And, oh yes, it does look like Sishi did delay his third ghoul a little bit. <clears throat> some people do that, or some undead players do that to, I guess pump out Crypt Fiends as quickly as possible because um, you don't necessarily need that much uh, lumber production not production, lumber lumber gathering rate uh, necessarily in the early stages and you know you could sacrifice that later on or you can compensate that later on Ugh. and it does look like that my cursor might be a little bit Wacky, cause oh well. Uh, I 
actually don't think I should be explaining since it is rather my own incompetence. Either way, Acolyte is going to be bullied out of his uh, spot in the gold mine thanks to one or two skeletons. But it won't matter too much, I don't think. I mean, at this point, I think Sishi is probably in a good position. I, even though he's going to be a little behind on his Hold of the Dead, um, he's got a good number of Crypt Fiends. He's got plus six claws on his Death Knight as well, so um, definitely a very good gift to be giving to the Lich if he ever pops out. W Set is underway with his Black Citadel tech. Uh, Seshi probably going to be following that suit as well. Uh, he should have the resources, which he does. I mean, he could probably just stay at Hall of the Dead and go for a Lich, but he is going to go Tier 3, um, you know, as soon as he chooses, which he did. Uh, we do have a, the Mammoth Camp. Uh, I'm not sure who got that. I believe that was Seshi, despite uh, WFZ going for the Death Coil. That did, however, uh, who picked up the item, I wonder, I think, oh, it's definitely going to be uh, Seshi that picked it up. It is going to be the Wand of Illusion, I think? No, I think it was the Replenishment Potion, in, in, in fact. So, I mean, things are still looking good for Seshi, as I will uh, continue to stand by my word. Even a Crypt Fiend got taken down during a WFZ's retreat. Alright, Slaughterhouse is available and it is producing the first obsidian statue. Meanwhile, Slaughterhouse has just been placed down for Seshi and earlier Lurch. Honestly, like, completely opposite timings for both both these players and whatever they prioritize. Um, a much, much earlier uh, second here for Seshi, but a later, later Slaughterhouse. Complete opposite for WF Sid. Um, a little later Lich, but a much earlier uh, sort of house. Of course, of course it doesn't really matter too much about the Lich timing in fact. As long as it aligns with uh, the, the finishing of the Black Citadel, that's when the Lich will most likely you know, be a pretty big player as he gets his Orb of Corruption. Uh, not really the case for for Seshi, however, because uh, I mean he he's not going to have the Orb of Corruption. Sure, it's a little bit of a damage boost, but the main thing is the armor reduction for that uh, Orb of Corruption, which is I guess very beneficial. But then again, the Lich can receive that close of attack and maybe the plus six Robe of Magi. But of course, the Death Knight does like himself his mana and. I mean, he has nothing to argue with in keeping that. Death Knight is going to be sent back to base to most likely pick up that orb. We are going to have, I think that is the first statue out for Seshi. And yep, he will be looking to maybe produce the second one. Alright, WFZ nearly level 2 on his Lich. I believe both players have been focusing on leveling up their Lich, but in this case, right now, WZ is uh, sticking his Death Knight in the front lines uh, for this party, or army. I think army is a better word. Uh, level 4 on the Death Knight for Seshi, he will be having his level 2 Unholy Aura. Meanwhile, uh, the Dark Ranger is going to be picked up for WFZ. Definitely nothing strange about this, but the fact is that Seshi also has tier 3, but he has not hired up uh, his Dark Ranger yet, and I don't know if he is going to do that. I mean, it's probably a good idea to, but it doesn't look like there's any indication or desire of getting that Dark Ranger out. Uh, illusion might even pass through that army and go for the tavern itself. I guess that's one way of doing it. I mean, I mean, you can take a risk where some players just completely ignore the illusion since they know it's an illusion. Dark Ranger is probably going to pick, be picked up here. I'll maybe just look somewhere else uh, since you know it's probably going to be very very boring. 
uh, waiting for that Dark Ranger to pop out. Watch Award has been claimed by WFZ, so it does look like that WFZ has claimed both of these Watch Awards. And it looks like the Dark Ranger has yet to be popped out. Okay, there we go. Uh, I guess the the illusion is incapable of getting the attention of the tavern. I have no idea. Um, but either way, attack coming in from WFZ, and the destroyer form is nearly done, so... I mean, if Seshi either TPs in or comes in from the flank, he could have destroyers available. Not sure if not sure if WFZ himself has destroyers available, but... Uh, oh well, silences are being cast on both sides. The Death Knight, for both players, are pretty much uh, silenced, so unable to toss out any death coils. Frost Novas... Uh, left and right, I guess, or maybe up and down. I guess that's the better, better direction. A couple of corpses already on the ground. Uh, I believe that those were a couple of WFZ crypt fiends, maybe one for uh, Seshi as well. But either way, invulnerability potion has been used on both of these liches. So uh, there's that. It did seem like a rather favorable fight for. I guess uh, Seshi, and especially since Seshi is the one chasing now, this is not looking too good for WZ. I mean, he already lost a an abomination as well. Pretty hard to take down, but was was able to. I mean, was able to kill that sucker. Uh, Mammoth camp on the top side will be cleared out. I honestly think that WZ. The one thing he's lacking is maybe uh, the hero advantage, so maybe he'll get that going. I honestly thought that that was uh, WFZ's destroyers because of that, uh, the blue on his, I guess you could call it scepter, but it eh, doesn't really matter too much. The uh, top right camp will be cleared out by uh, Seshi and he will get himself a Hellhound uh, token, a spiked collar, and it's not a Hellhound, it's a Fellstalker, excuse my mistake there. Either way, uh, WFZ spotting out his opponent, clearing out the top right raid creep camp, uh, encourages him to clear one out himself, and maybe he'll get a better item, I don't know, the Blue Drake camp is going to be cleared out by Seshi, that is going to be uh, the last red creep camp in the top right, and you know traditionally his side of the map, so it better be a like a damn good item. Uh, could be a stone token, but it is going to be a health stone. So um, hopefully you guys do remember a couple series ago. Uh, I don't actually remember the exact series itself. I think it was an orc vs orc, um, but like definitely health stone has turned the tide and was able to force a GG like despite the player being down so you know an item like that can really really tip like how the game ends autocast web for Seshi is nearly done I'm not sure if WZ actually has that luxury he has 2-0 on his upgrades meanwhile uh, Seshi is 1-0 so I mean you can't have everything I mean Seshi's I guess that kinda balances out I think. Maybe you'd like 2-0 instead of 1-0 web. Oh, interesting. We are going to have uh, Seshi being the one claiming this creep camp, and it is going to be another health stone. And it's going to be given to the Dark Ranger. So, very good items for <coughs> uh, for Se Seshi. Sorry about that. Uh, I usually... Uh, I usually mute the mic uh, when I go for a cough, but that just came out of nowhere. It does look like Seshi is focusing on the destroyer count uh, for this game. We, I mean, it's it's a little of a mixed bag. Some people go for just just standard two statues, and then you know turn those two into destroyers or or we can go Seshi's way where he masses up on destroyers and doesn't really necessarily focus on his uh, statue count. 
So let's see how this will turn out to be. The sacrificial pit has been completed, but there we go. WFZ is going to be summoning himself a rock golem. That was huge lag. I have no idea what happened there. Fell hound or fell stalker is summoned, and surprisingly enough, Sishi lost his death knight very very quickly. That might be a little bit troublesome for Sishi in the later game, or I mean not later game. Uh, as as long as this fight actually fr uh, extends. Because without the healing of the Death Knight, that is going to be very catastrophic for, for Sishi himself. I mean, both his other two heroes have the Health Stone, so maybe that might be able to carry them without the aid of the Death Coil. But, yeah, this is not looking that good for Sishi so far. He did lose uh, half of his half of his destroyers, and it doesn't look like he has that many Crypt Fiends either. And it does look like WZ is out outnumbering his opponent. 50, uh, 46 versus 41. Um, of course, most of the supply from both sides are pretty much dedicated to maybe uh, remaking the army. We are going to have Sishi Tavern reviving his Death Knight. A rather interesting move, to be fairly honest, because Death Knight will be coming in with fairly no mana, but uh, I believe it was the, the Lich as well as... yeah, it was just the Lich that gave him both the Hellstone and Greater Mana Potion. So it doesn't really matter too much, the Death Knight is out with full everything. Uh, right now not necessarily health, but oh well. W said uh, Death Knight very close to being killed off, but with a point into Death Pact. No Unholy or a level 2, it was uh, Death Pact. He was able to sacrifice his Abomination for full health, so... A sign of desperation, maybe, but... Uh, maybe the the abomination was going to die anyway. Um, who necessarily knows? There we go with a, a dust of appearance. It was either to you know go after that bird crypt fiend or maybe maybe wondering whether or not a shade was uh, following the army. Either way, uh, we still have one more one more charge on that dust of appearance, so you might be having. That shade being killed off later on. Where is that shade? I have no idea. There was definitely a... Oh, there it is. Yeah, I was going to say, there was definitely a shade being sacrificed. But, you know, absolutely no idea where it was. Low upkeep has been started off by uh, Seshi. Meanwhile, WZ is choosing to stay um, within the... The... The taxless... If that's a word. Um... Taxless, uh, what is it? Economy? Something like that. Alright. Seishi, not too much on his Crypt Fiends, but not necessarily that amazing on his Destroyer count either. It's gonna be rather interesting. It, and, I mean, it already is now. WFZ is going for those Banshees. We did see in the previous Undead Mirror, I believe, how effective those banshees were. Sure, those destroyers kinda, um, uh, kinda neutralized those banshees, like overpowered, not necessarily neutralized, but at the same time, like autocast web on those crypt fiends make things absolutely amazing. They counter the banshees counter, and the only way to counter crypt fiends is either more crypt fiends or more destroyers. But yeah. Um, Things are not looking too good for Seshi. He is losing quite a bit of Crypt Fiends. Same thing for WSA, but at least he is microing very, very well with his Burrows. Dust Appearance is going to be tossed, but at the same time, it's not really going to be proving that useful because he just retreated immediately. Uh, plus, Curse from those Banshees are going to make things a lot more harder for Seshi to deal with as he continues fighting because, I mean, each missed, uh, each miss means more damage could have been dealt but just not able to so I mean I'm still surprised that Seshi is sticking around uh, I mean he is kind of kind of overpowering his opponent as well but at the same time don't want to deal too much with the static defenses of WFZ I don't imagine uh, we don't have any more Banshees but we are going to produce more. Yeah. 
Okay, here we go with another attack coming in. It does look like an abomination will be uh, maybe soaking up the damage for Seshi, while WFZ is more on focusing on uh, getting his supportive units, such as the Banshee, out. We're going to have an abomination underway, however, for WFZ, so may be able to match that sort of meatiness in the front. Uh, more statues are coming in for Seshi. We're going to have a shade following the main army of Seshi, however, so, you know, got to be careful about the uh, the dust. Shade actually seeing if any expansions were taken by Seiji. I I'm honestly surprised neither player has gone that. Uh, however, it is m it is very noticeable that undead players generally choose to all in once their gold mine is depleted rather than uh, rather than expand. It's a very very rare occurrence, but you know that kind of is a good sign for me in this case because it just shows that the game will be over very very soon uh, but you know that's not exactly a viable reason to see that as a good thing Antimagic Shell on the Death Knight and the Dark Ranger we are gonna have a couple of curses tossed in the army of Seshi there we go with another silence on the Death Knight, unable to heal up that Crypt Fiend. But on the other side, for Seshi, he needs to be careful not to lose the Abomination. I mean, he couldn't, he can toss out a Death Coil, which he will do, thank God, because I mean, there was the, there was the, the chance that the silence would have come, came out, and Abomination would have been lost. But either way, it does seem like both the abominations are the target for both players. Does look like Seshi lost him lost his own abomination. A huge amount of damage for the Death Knight, but thankfully uh invulnerability potion has been given off from another hero and a death pact was used on the abominations. Both players did lose themselves the abomination, but both players or at least in Seshi's case, looks like he is killing quite a bit. Although his Dark Ranger is now going to be hit, as well as his Death Knight. His Death Knight needs to be careful. Dark Ranger as well. She's... I mean, she's no longer invulnerable. But the Death Coil comes out. And, oh wow, Death... Uh, invulnerability Potion has been used in the last second. Oh, Lich needs to be careful. And he will be taken down. Uh, and all three heroes of Sishi will be able to retreat. Hmm... This, I mean, it's not that great for Seishi right now. I mean, he did lose his Death Knight in the previous skirmish on the top left of the map. So I guess the hero advantage would be equal. Uh, I don't know, level 544 versus, I imagine, 544 as well. Yep. Of course, uh, we also have to notice that the Death Knight... Uh, he doesn't have Unholy Aura level 2, so you gotta keep that in mind as well. Uh, Seishi does, does, but he doesn't have Death Pact, so there's, I don't know, there's always this scenario where uh, Death Pact can be more useful than level 2 Unholy Aura, but I mean, we have to see, because Death Pact still kinda kills off one of your units instantly and of course it's death pack's not that effective if you if you sacrifice a very very close to death unit anyway cause it's I believe it's consumed and healed based on the current health instead of max health if it's max health then I would be seeing death packs way more often than usual but uh, definitely not the not the case so that's generally why but so far I mean with Death Pact on WF Sid's Death Knight, it makes his Death Knight a little bit more ballsy and wants to play a little more aggressively compared to uh, Seshi's one. I mean, look at Seshi. He he has both Curse and very low health on him right now, so it makes him, I guess, kind of hesitant to go in the middle of things. And as soon as like target focuses on him, he he will retreat. Uh, another 
Another Quick Fiend is going to be taken down. A Dark Minion is going to be spawned thanks to the Black Arrows of the Dark Ranger. And of course, the best thing about dar uh, the Dark uh, the Black Arrows is you can use that for either Dark Ritual or Death Pact. So um, it kind of removes the disadvantage of using Death Pact at the same time, because I mean you don't have to worry about sacrificing free units. Dark Ranger of Seshi is going to be killed off and might have been a mistake. I don't know if Seshi's Death Knight was actually uh, silenced, so um, probably a misplay from Seshi's part. <coughs> Griffin versus a Banshee. Even though the Banshee uh, has the Griffin cursed, Griffin will definitely win and it does look like the Death Knight was killed off. Uh, sorry about that. I got a little distracted with the Crypt Fiend and Banshee, but uh, that's kind of embarrassing because I was just talking about how the Death Knight for WFZ would be able to survive much more, much easier because he does have Death Pact, but that, that just showed how wrong I was. I don't know what happened. Maybe, maybe the Death Knight already had uh, Death Pact on cooldown. That's maybe why he didn't he didn't keep him alive but damn that's gonna be a problem uh, and this is the scenario here both gold mines have been depleted and I mean neither player is looking to in intend to go for an expand I mean WFZ like to be fair He's doing a really good job in terms of map vision compared to Seshi. Like Seshi, it's really unfortunate he didn't get any of these watch awards. Because if you look at Seshi's uh, part, he can only see this region of the map. He can't see the he can't see the map on the right. He can't see the map on the left. And of course, all uh, WFZ needs to do is just keep one shade next to Seshi's army and maybe another uh, around the part where the watch awards can't see. It's really unfortunate. We're going to have the graveyard being unsummoned uh, for Seshi. He's also going to unsummon a Ziggurat. I mean, all all Seshi wants to do is get as much resources as possible and, you know, build the best army you can. I'm not sure if he did that necessarily. I think he just spent the gold on items. So he's got two lesser invulnerability potions on the Death Knight and uh, Lich, I'm not sure where the Dark Ranger is. There she is. Okay, so of course the gold could have also been uh, spent on the Dark Ranger's uh, revival. <clears throat> Either way, Anti Magic Shell is going to be casted on the majority of WFZ's units, so this is going to be a rather difficult fight for Seshi to undertake, especially since this is on the home turf of WFZ. Uh, Statue is going to be taken down on WFZ's side, but we did have a ghoul. I think, taken down. Frost Nova able to take down both a Banshee as well as a Shade, so kind of a lucky picking right there. Acolytes are being taken down from uh, Seshi's side, and that is not necessarily too great, because that makes for very easy Dark Minion spawns. So, could have been, could have been a mistake, I don't know. Uh, another Dark Ritual is going to be used, and the Lich is very close to full mana once again, compared to Seishis, who is about 100 mana down. There we go, the Frost Nova, but it didn't do that much damage thanks to the Anti-Magic Shell. Looks like Focus Fire is going to be happening on the Lich of Seishi, however, uh, the Death Knight is now out of silence, so he will be casting that Death Coil once again to heal him up. Frost Nova on the Death Knight, looking to maybe burst him down. Death Coil, unfortunately, was a little too late, unable to save that Crypt Fiend. Unvulnerable Potion is going to be used on the Death Knight. Uh, needs to be careful, because that's going to be his last form of like guaranteed survivability. Dark Ranger on her part does not have an Invulnerability Potion. And, okay, here we go. Very big Frost Nova on the Death Knight of WFZ, but... WFZ looks to be chasing out his opponent. Huh. It's been really back and forth, honestly. Uh, both players 
it's it's always this thing like both players don't uh, neither player goes the same thing either one player goes destroyers and crypt fiends while the other goes like banshees and the other I mean it's always been that scenario and I think the person who's gone banshees has pretty much won most of the time and it does look like that Sishi is going to be unsummoning most of his buildings curiously enough he's also unsummoning the black citadel uh, he will I think this is just an just a form of suicide I guess because honestly there I don't see any way of Sishi winning this he has an army supply of 16 versus army supply of 39 and yeah it's been it's majorly been the the heroes so GG from Sishi that is going to be game uh, and yeah um, that we said playing pretty solidly even though Sishi also played solid as well um, I think it just came down to your armor composition. I honestly think that the Banshee the Banshee composition is just better. It's better than the Mass Destroyers. And that is going to be that. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one game. Uh, I will, I'm will. i looking to cast you know, more frequently than I have been for the past few months, but I've been busy playing Dragon Age. Dragon Age Origins, by the way. Either way, I'll see you guys again next time. I will be casting Focus versus Moon. So, if you like Moon, if you like Focus, uh, yeah, look forward to that one. Take care.